Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. And I am your host, Conrad Cushman. And today we are going to honor the recent passing of Leon White, better known to wrestling fans as Big Van Vader. To start this episode of the podcast, I would like to offer my condolences to Leon White's entire family. He was an amazing performer inside of the wrestling ring. One of the best big men of all time to go into the ring, lace up the boots, and put on a hell of a show week in and week out for us, whether it be in Japan, the United States, no matter where he was, Vader played to his character. And he was one of the best big men, one of the best heels in the professional wrestling business. And I wanted to do this show to honor him because if you are a wrestling fan within the last 20 years, you know who Big Van Vader is. And Vader is one of the best of all time. Leon Allen White. He was born May 14th, 1955, better known as Big Van Vader or simply Vader. He was not only a professional wrestler, he was also an actor and a football player. He had performed in some of the top wrestling companies across the world, from New Japan Pro Wrestling to World Championship Wrestling to the World Wrestling Federation, even All Japan Pro Wrestling. And he gained legendary status in the pro wrestling business by being known as one of the greatest super heavyweight wrestlers of all time. Leon White grew up in California, where his father was a U.S. Marine and he attended Los Angeles Bell High School, where he competed in shot put on the track and field team, wrestled, and he played football. Leon White was a nationally ranked center who was recruited by 40 colleges. He played offensive line eventually at the University of Colorado, where he became a two-time, two-time All-American, and he earned a business administration degree at the same time. In the 1978 NFL draft, White was drafted by the Los Angeles Rams as a center with the 24th pick in the third round and 80th overall. Now, During White's first season, he was put on the injured reserve list, but in his second season, he played in Super Bowl XIV against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was forced to retire only after a couple of seasons due to a ruptured patella, but he eventually got back on his feet and did greater things. Now, while working out at a gym, he was spotted by someone who remembered him from his college football days who suggested that he should look into professional wrestling. During that time, Leon White got his first national exposure with the AWA, known as the American Wrestling Association. He was given the first moniker of Baby Bull, which was later then changed to Bull Power. During this time, White honed his skills in the ring and improved his in-ring work so significantly that he was granted a title match against Stan Hansen for the AWA World Heavyweight Championship, which he didn't win, but this was something that was great for his career and would lead him to prosper later on down the line. Originally, Leon White signed with All Japan Pro Wrestling, but at the time, owner Giant Baba ended up trading White's contract over in 1987 to New Japan Pro Wrestling, where White was given the new ring name Big Van Vader, and he began wearing a black mask. Now, during this time, this is when Vader's career began to get really big and he started gaining some huge notoriety but it all started when vader ended up demanding a match with the already worn down antonio Inoki and emerging victorious now after this happened this led to an audience riot resulting in new japan pro wrestling being banned from sumo hall which is its home arena think of how crazy that was and the ban was not rescinded until 1989 when New Japan did their first show back in Sumo Hall in February of 1989. That is crazy to think about in today's wrestling world, that Big Van Vader had that much heat to where he started a riot. But he, like I said, he had an amazing career, and we're only in the early stages of it. Now, at the same time, he also won an eight-man tournament 
and he became the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, which is one of the greatest honors in this wrestling business. And that is something that he should be proud of because with Kenny Omega recently winning the IWGP title, not many people from America have won that championship belt. And that belt is very protected over there uh, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And Vader is one of the guys who has the honor of saying that he won that championship belt and much respect to him for it. During this time, Big Van Vader traveled all across the world, wrestling people in Europe, Mexico, and really becoming a phenomenal international superstar in the world of professional wrestling. But one of Vader's greatest moments happened, and it's something he would later become known for, and something that a lot of people really, really don't want to think about happening to them ever in the pro wrestling business. Um, February 1990, Vader wound up facing Stan Hansen at an AJPW versus NJPW Supercard show. Now, before Vader entered the ring, Hansen accidentally broke Vader's nose with a bull rope that he carried to the ring for his matches during a stiff exchange of punches. Now, stiff punches in wrestling means that they aren't worked. You're actually getting punched literally in the face. And Vader and Stan Hansen are the two guys in the wrestling business that are going to bring it. And they're going to make sure you feel it, too. Now, Hansen unintentionally poked Vader's left eye with his thumb during their brawl. And in this match, which you can go find it on YouTube, wherever, if you have never seen this, um, it's gruesome. Uh, Vader's eye actually popped out of its socket during the match. Now, Vader ended up having to remove his mask, and he wound up during the match pushing his eye back into the socket and holding it in place with his eyelid. That is pretty disgusting. And Vader continued wrestling the match with Hansen until the match was rendered a no contest. As a result of the injury, Vader ended up getting a metal plate put underneath his eye for it. And with that, Vader basically got success and... He was noticed by more wrestling companies. And who was the first wrestling company to really take notice of him? World Championship Wrestling, known as WCW. Now, during this time, New Japan Pro Wrestling and WCW both had worked out a deal where they were both going to be allowed to use Vader. Now, Vader made his debut in WCW uh, for the Great American Bash Show, which was July 7th, 1990, and he took on Tom Zink, who he defeated in a squash match. Not a big deal. Vader was still feuding with Stan Hansen at the time, still traveling all over the world. And then Vader later went on to defeat Fujinami for his third IWGP World Heavyweight title reign. Now, the reign was short-lived. Fujinami took the belt right back in March. But Vader went on to still travel the world and do his thing. But his schedule was drawing near, but he was going to still go on to do some great things. Now, on March 1st, 1992, to start beginning towards his end of his New Japan Pro Wrestling career, he teamed up with Bam Bam Bigelow, another great big man, and they formed a tag team called Big Bad and Dangerous. The duo went on to win the IWGP Tag Team Championships. and. With everything going on, they wound up losing the tag titles to the Steiner brothers after having a near four-month reign. Now, after losing these titles, this also started to show the decrease in appearances he would make for New Japan Pro Wrestling as Vader began to focus on becoming solely a WCW wrestler and focusing on winning the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. In WCW, Vader was paired with one of the wrestling greats, Harley Race, and he wound up receiving a shot at Sting's World Heavyweight Championship and was disqualified. Now, they made Vader come in as a hard-hitting bruiser, and he wound up uh, giving Sting some cracked ribs and a ruptured spleen in a match after giving him the Vader bomb, and it really put Vader over as one of the baddest people in WCW to be messed with. He also was placed in feuds with Nikita Koloff, and Vader basically did so many good things. And he finally received a rematch with Sting at the Great American Bash, where he went on to win the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. 
Now, Vader wasn't champion too long because of an injured knee, and he wound up losing the title to Ron Simmons, who was WCW's first ever African-American world heavyweight champion, who wound up coming in for Sting because of a feud that Sting was having with Jake the Snake Roberts at the time. Now, Vader was out of action for a little bit, and he ended up returning at Halloween Havoc, and Vader basically retired Nikita Koloff, and he actually broke the back of someone after that. Um, I believe the wrestler's name is Joe Thurman, who was basically a jobber wrestler, and he paralyzed him for a few hours because of Vader's stiff in-ring work. And if you go and look it up, I believe it was on a Saturday night's main event. It looks absolutely brutal what happened to the guy. Um, but Vader's still one of the best. He always made sure that his in-ring work looked good. But, man, that's a scary moment for Joe Thurman when you watch that going back. Now, at Starcade, Vader loses to Sting in a King of a Cable tournament. And... Basically, Vader had a lot of big rivals in WCW, and it's a bunch of the names I'm saying. When I think of Vader in WCW, I think of him feuding with people like Sting, Nikita Koloff, Ron Simmons, Dustin Rhodes, Davey Boy Smith, who was also there for a short period of time, and... I'll even put Cactus Jack on there because I remember him and Mick Foley getting into it and... Oh, man. One of the most brutal things I've ever seen. It was on an episode of Saturday Night. And during the match, about Cactus Jack suffered a broken nose and he needed 27 stitches for wounds on his face because he told Vader to legitimately break his nose during the match. Um, another brutal spot with Vader and Cactus Jack matches is also when he power bombed Cactus Jack on the outside to concrete floor. No protection. And I don't know what Mick Foley was thinking at the time, but man, I definitely remember that as a kid. And I thought these were two of the toughest people in WCW. Now, I know we just went over some of Big Van Vader's best feuds in WCW, and I named all of those guys. But I do want to still touch on that a little bit before we get into matches that he could have had. Now, during this time, I do remember that Vader had awesome matches with Sting. So many good ones that if you go on the WWE Network, look those up and check them out. Whether you're just a fan, inspiring to be a wrestler, those matches are all tremendous and really, really good. So go back and check those out. And I forgot to mention something else about Vader and Cactus Jack. Now, Vader and Cactus Jack wound up having a match in Germany, and that is where Mick Foley ended up losing his ear. So if you ever notice that Mick Foley's ear is missing, Vader was in the match where it happened. And it was during a spot that Foley often did in WCW as Cactus Jack to where he would stick his head in between the ropes and he would hold it there and then eventually get out. But on one of these occasions, his ear actually became trapped in the ropes and due to excessive tension, caused his ear to be torn off during the match. So very gruesome stuff, and Vader was always a part of a lot of that stuff in WCW. Now, we all remember Vader and Sid Vicious were a tag team known as the Masters of the Powerbomb for a little bit, and they were setting up to have a match at Starcade. And I think this match would have been tremendous, and it's one of those missed opportunities that I would have loved to have seen what WCW was going to do if they did it. Now, this match was dismissed after... Sid Vicious and Arn Anderson got into an altercation in England to where Sid, I believe, was the one who was stabbed by some scissors that Arn Anderson had. And it just got way out of hand. Eric Bischoff and Ric Flair and whoever else was in charge at that time basically said, we can't have this going on backstage. And Sid got sent home because of it. Um, it changed a lot of different things up. And we wound up getting Ric Flair, who came back from WWF at the time to face Vader in a pretty decent match where it was odd to see Ric Flair work as face and Vader was the heel. But Vader was the man, like I said, at the time. And eventually you started seeing more people getting brought back in like Ricky Steamboat, Rick Rude, and all these guys wound up working with Vader. So 
something very cool to check out. Now, at the Clash of the Champions, Vader defeated Dustin Rhodes and earned a shot at becoming U.S. heavyweight champion by facing Jim Duggan at Starcade. Vader defeated Duggan at the time with the aid of a two by four, and he became the U.S. heavyweight champion. Now, Vader had to end his alliance with Harley Race because Race was involved in an auto accident and had to leave WCW. Vader then confronted the WCW World Heavyweight Champion at that time. Many of you know him, Hulk Hogan. And you know if you're facing Hulk Hogan, you have reached the top of your career during this time. Because not many guys got to say that. And some people wanted that opportunity so bad. And Big Van Vader could say he did that in WCW. Now... He wound up facing him, and he never regained his um, WCW championship from him, but he always put on a threat to it, and it was just very sad to see how Vader wound up leaving WCW towards the end because they started picking up all the old WWF names slowly. Like I said, I mentioned Ric Flair came, Jim Duggan, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man Randy Savage and Vader and Sting and some of those other guys who were around in the early 90s were relegated to kind of mid card, upper mid card level. And nothing wrong with that, but I still think that Vader was one of the top prospects in WCW and they could have kept him a little bit stronger during that time, but still one of the best. And we're going to get into what happened after everything with WCW. Now, I know some people are going to wonder, what actually led Vader to leave WCW? He looked like he was in a pretty decent spot. He was the U.S. heavyweight champion. He had some different things going on. And you know you can't be champion forever. But they looked like they were trying to turn him face and align him with uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, Sting, all the top baby faces, And he was going to join them for a War Games match and be on their team. But the storyline never really got developed because Vader was involved in a locker room brawl with the legend Paul Orndorff, Mr. Wonderful to some. Now, Vader featured in multiple shots for the debut of Nitro, but Vader ended up parting ways and he was never really seen on any of the episodes of Nitro. So it was pretty sad to never see Vader on Nitro, but his career would wind up blossoming later on, and we'll get into that as well. Now, Vader did return to New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he came in there. Not too bad, but it was a short-lived run because Vader was on his way to the World Wrestling Federation with Vince McMahon, and this is where a lot of people got to see who Vader was, and this is where his career kind of branched out a little bit further than wrestling. And we're going to talk about that. Now, in the weeks leading up to the Royal Rumble in 1996, Vader's debut was hyped. And I mean hyped. They were calling him the man they call Vader. And Vince originally wanted to rename Vader the Mastodon. No, it's Vader, man. And I'm glad that I believe it was Jim Cornette and Bruce Prichard and all of the backstage guys who talked Vince McMahon into the guy's name is Vader and we can call him the Mastodon as his nickname. And he was basically first appearing in the WWF as a participant in the Royal Rumble match. And I remember thinking if Shawn Michaels isn't winning it, Vader was my pick to win it because Vader had done so much tremendous stuff beforehand that I was aware of as a kid that I knew he would do great. Um, Vader came in and he eliminated people like Jake, the snake Roberts, Doug Gilbert, a member of the SWAT team. Those were the two um, short Samoan guys who were a tag team. And he even eliminated Savio Vega and fought with another great big man, Yokozuna. And Vader was eliminated by Shawn Michaels before he re-entered the ring and assaulted everyone. They put Vader over huge in his debut. And Vader went on to beat down a lot of people in the WWF. And I remember... Something that was real different back then, this was like kind of pre-Attitude Era, but you started seeing sprinkles of the Attitude Era. Now, back then, you never really saw the WWF president getting attacked on television or in physical altercations with anyone. But Vader ended up attacking, at the time, President Gorilla Monsoon, and he wound up 
basically hitting him with several Vader bombs and Vader was suspended because of that. And really it was just crazy to see Vader attack a WWF official at that time. Cause you didn't see that often. We see it all the time today. So that's crazy in my opinion. Now he also had a really different, um, angle with Yokozuna as well. I remember him doing the Vader bomb on Yokozuna's leg and injuring him doing that. And during that time, Vader was aligned with Jim Cornette and Cam Cornette was pushing Vader really hard to get title matches and that he was a force to be reckoned with. And he was in feuds with a bunch of different wrestlers. Um, Those people were people like Yokozuna, Ahmed Johnson, Jake, the snake Roberts, all the guys who were mid card baby faces in 1996, 97 timeframe. And Vader just destroyed everyone until he got a WWF World Heavyweight title match with Shawn Michaels, who was the then champion. And I know a lot of people look at the shoot interviews and they'll see that Shawn and Vader didn't always get along. Vader was originally supposed to become WWF champion at SummerSlam and defeat Shawn Michaels. But I guess Shawn threw a hissy fit and did not want to drop the title to Vader. But and you can listen to Jim Cornette talk about that and go off on him for it. But Vader and Sean had a decent match, I thought, at SummerSlam. Not saying that it was a, a five-star classic, but I thought that those two had pretty good chemistry. And they had good matches. So they basically did some things where Vader had won by countouts and stuff like that with Sean. But he never got the belt. And Sean ended up getting his way, and Vader never became WWF champion, which was really sad. Um, Vader also faced off in a singles match with The Undertaker, and that was also two of the best big men locking it up. And you guys could check that out for yourselves, but definitely something different to see. Um, Vader and Undertaker also went on to compete in the Royal Rumble match, during which he ended up going in the ring once again with one of the best wrestlers in the company at the time is someone who was actually looking to take over the company stone cold, Steve Austin. And this is in 1997 where they had the crazy um, four way ending kind of, which led to a fatal four way match at the next month's pay-per-view with all of the guys, but turned out different. Uh, Vader then got lost kind of in translation after this. He wound up teaming with Mankind for the WWF Tag Team titles at WrestleMania 13, where he fought Owen Hart and the British Bulldog for it. Different, but still kind of odd. And I felt like after this, this is when Vader really didn't have a clear direction for what they wanted to do with him. He feuded with Bret Hart, the Patriot, a bunch of different people, and they eventually turned Vader face putting him in like the USA versus Canada feud and basically had him team up with Steve Blackman and gold dust, Mark Merrow at survivor series. And I'm just trying to remember all of this off the top of my head, but Vader really didn't deserve that. I felt like he wasn't used properly during that time as well. Vader just was someone who they started using him right, but he never finished being used right. And Vader had lost to a couple of different people. He lost to Edge on Sunday Night Heat in his final televised match. And uh, just, uh, I don't know. I just wasn't a big fan of how they used Vader towards the end. Now, Vader did end up returning to All Japan Pro Wrestling and Pro Wrestling Noah after leaving the WWF. He formed a team with uh, Stan Hansen, and they did some different things there, but we never really saw Vader get back to that height that he once had during that time. And that was peak Vader time period. Now Vader made an appearance for TNA wrestling, uh, which was, I think NWA at the time, total nonstop action wrestling. Um, And he defended dusty Rhodes, who was fighting the Harris brothers and they won a tag match against them. And a lot of guys had one-off matches like that with TNA. Pretty cool. And he also returned to the WWE in 2005 Um, on an episode of Raw where Vader and Goldust were going to be in Jonathan Coachman's corner uh, for his street fight against Stone Cold at Taboo Tuesday when Austin decided not to participate in that match. He was replaced by Batista, and Vader and Goldust basically took some bumps for Coachman during the match. 
And it was nice to see Vader return. It was a that's what I remember most about it was Vader and Goldust returning for it. Now, Vader went back to the independent circuit for a little bit of time to where he wrestled and shared his knowledge with a lot of wrestlers, um, with guys like Samoa Joe, Mike Awesome, and he even faced like Brutus the Barber Beefcake. You just saw him in different matches that were really cool to see him in. Um, he even made some returns back to different uh, Japanese territories. He ended up facing Fujinami and some other guys. And he came back to Wrestle Reunion in Los Angeles in 2012. And Vader defeated Jay Bradley. If you guys don't remember him, you can look him up. He was um, in TNA. And he also had the names Jay Bradley, Aiden O'Shea. And he was in as uh, known in WWE as what was his name? Ryan Braddock in 2008. He didn't have a long run, but a lot of people saw him as a hopeful. And Vader was trying to teach him some things to make him better. Um, Vader wound up doing a lot of different things, guys. He even returned to TNA. Uh, he fought a singles match against Bram. Vader was all over. He came back to WWE in 2012. He had an oh he had a great appearance on the thousandth episode of Monday Night Raw, where he and several other legends basically beat down Heath Slater, who called people out. And Vader's last great thing with WWE that he did was he got to induct someone who brought him into the wrestling business. Vader inducted Stan Hansen into the Hall of Fame. Now, I know you wrestling fans did not think that I was going to forget about Vader's television appearances, right? I hope not. Two, one, two of the distinct ones that I can remember, I'll just say for now, are um, he was on Baywatch. Uh, it was Bash at the Beach, and he did appear as himself, Vader. And on Boy Meets World, which is a classic show if you guys have never watched it, um, in 95, 96, he appeared in several episodes of... And on that show, he was uh, Frankie's father, actually. Frankie's father was Vader, the pro wrestler. And he appears in, a, I, I want to say, about four or five episodes for Boy Meets World. And Vader always did a tremendous job. And it was very cool for them to incorporate pro wrestling into it. Vader's been featured in all of the video games. And Vader has so much going for him. And... It's sad to hear about Vader passing away. Um, Vader was one of my favorite pro wrestlers, like I said once again. And I always thought he did a hell of a job in the ring. Vader was one of the only big men that I've ever seen do a moonsault at his size in the ring and do it gracefully. Vader always just gave his 100% effort in that ring. And for that, I'm sad to see him gone. Um, I don't want anybody to think that Vader was nothing. I know he never got put into the WWE Hall of Fame. And I think that's a shame. And I really wish that they would have put Vader in while he was alive so that we could have heard a speech from him and heard the guy talk and share his memories and everything else. Um, I just really think that was a missed opportunity by WWE. And for this, I have to say, that Vader just put on some great matches and I really would appreciate it if wherever you guys are listening to this show, if you could leave me your favorite Vader memory, whether it's in the everything pro wrestling group on the wrestling Aminu app, if you're just listening to us on anchor, leave me your favorite Vader memory. And I want to hear it. Just tell me a match. You liked a great moment, something that you'll never forget about Vader because I think he's really one of the best big men that we've ever had. And I really don't want his memory to be forgotten. And I hope WWE gives him the 10 bell salute, the next show that they have on television, because Vader deserves it. And like I said, he's one of the best of all time. I thank you guys for listening to me talk about Vader on this tribute show. Um, this is everything pro wrestling. It's a show by the fans for the fans. And I'm out. Thank you very much. Vader, we miss you. 
And I just wanted to take the time out to tell Vader's family once again, my condolences for the loss of Leon White from your family. He was one hell of a wrestler. He always put on a great show from the time I was a little kid and I was fearful of him when he had the really cool mask in WCW that he came out with that blew the smoke to when Vader would just have that presence about him that made you want to watch pro wrestling. And no matter how he was feeling, whether his patella bothered him, his knee hurt, his back hurt, Vader always went out there and gave 100% effort. And for that, I'm very thankful. He always made me feel better whenever I had a problem and I came home from school and I wanted to watch wrestling. And whether I was feeling good and I wanted to watch wrestling, I think sometimes we as fans forget that these guys are human too. And Vader is definitely a WWE Hall of Famer in my eyes. Vader is a true great in the world of pro wrestling. And he definitely deserves all the respect that he gets. And I wanted to take the time to say rest in peace to Vader and basically thank you for all of the memories. You are gone, but you will never, ever be forgotten. Thank you, Vader.